Hello, hello, hello. How are you, everyone? We have come to the end of Star Trek Day 2022, and we are going to bring you all of the things that we learned from the panels that took place this evening. Now, we got some trailers, we got some clips, we got a bit of news. It was a good bit of fun. We're going to jump straight into it because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through a wonderful little trailer for the third and final season of Star Trek Picard. And that is right. USS Titan A debuts in Star Trek Picard's Season 3 trailer and more. Now, this is something I most definitely have a notepad for because there's quite a bit in this trailer. It's only 57 seconds long, but there's a good bit to digest in it. So, kicking off straight away, we have the reveal of a new old ship. So, this is a ship that Dr. Crusher seems to be on, so lovely to see her back, especially holding a First Contact Era rifle. But the ship itself seems to be sort of a hybrid of vessels. It seems to be a little bit like if you think of the concept art for the USS Defiant, which eventually became the Nova class USS Equinox, mixed with an NX-01 design. I think put all those together in a blender and that's this kind of ship that you will get. You see a good shot of it from the front, which would remind you again, very much of the Nova class and a little bit of the Norway class as well. Now approaching this ship from behind seems to be an Enterprise era Nausicaan vessel. And this is backed up by Nausicaans on board this ship that Crusher is firing her phaser at. Now the next thing we see is that Picard is using his old com badge, his TNG era com badge, which is sitting there along with his red uniform and it's a recorded message from Crusher looking for Admiral Picard to come and help her. We really hope she's not in the next shot because the next shot shows what seems to be an embassy type building with Federation logo on it being bombed into the ground. So really hope she's not there. We see then another planet that's surrounded by Federation shuttles, one that looks very like the Insurrection Era shuttle that we saw going up against the Federation scout ship when Worf and Picard were singing along with Data. The, sh the planet would remind you of Free Cloud, especially with all the bars and the lights. We see Picard and Riker sharing a bottle of Swafford whiskey. They seem to be nearly at the bottom of it. Picard says to Riker, I couldn't possibly ask you to put yourself in harm's way. And Riker goes, since when? I had a look for Swafford whiskey online, not being much of a whiskey drinker myself. It was not something that jumped out to me. And when I went to my trusty pal, Google, it did not bring me up any Swafford whiskey. So I choose to believe that this is a whiskey that was named after the poor ill-fated friend of Captain Sisko in the episode Far Beyond the Stars. Poor Quentin Swafford was killed, which sets off the events that the prophets have to put Benny Russell into existence. I will not give this up. I want to see Cisco back in Picard. There's nothing else. And remember the big clue about Cisco from the trailer from season two? Yeah, I'm not reading too much into this one, put it that way. We see a tiny little Federation flag that's sitting behind Picard, and that could be the only Federation thing we see, except for the very next scene where we see this absolutely souped up version of Space Dock. It's still in orbit of Earth. It's got a little bit of extra stuff going on around it, a little bit like Starbase One in Strange New Worlds. We see what looks like a Gagarin class ship flying away and what looks like a Sovereign class ship hovering above. And if you look down at the bottom right of the screen, I think that looks like a California class ship. I would be so okay with that to be a thing. We see then shots of the people who are going to make up Picard's crew. There's a shot of Raffi who looks very kind of worried. Michelle Hurd revealed on stage that Raffi was going to be a character through whom we explore the criminal underworld of Starfleet. So I reckon this is going to be, if not an Orion Syndicate type thing, then, you know, something that will bring you to places like Free Cloud, which is possibly why Riker and Picard are having their conversation there. We see a silent yet lovely shot of Geordi, who is in uniform. We see Worf, who's holding someone up by the arm. And I think looking closely, it looks like he's holding up Raffi. We see Councillor Troy, Commander Troy I should say, looking none too pleased, yet sporting a Starfleet badge. Another shot of Crusher, in which she's wearing a jacket with, with those kind of frills that would really remind you of the Wrath of Khan. They'd really remind you of that Wrath of Khan jacket. I know this because it cost me enough to get one made. There then follows what I think is a misdirect. Riker and Picard are flying in a shuttle in space dock, and Riker looks up and says, Hello, beautiful. Now, the next thing we see, it cuts to black, 
even though the inside looks quite like Space Dock from Star Trek 3, 4, 5 and 6. And of course, I'm not even going to attempt to get the number of ones and zeros right, the Binar episode of season one. They're flying along and it cuts to black, right? And the next thing we see, they're being welcomed aboard this new ship by Commander Seven, which is great. And they're brought onto the bridge, which is obviously the redress of the Stargazer bridge, but it's not the Stargazer, it's the Titan. Now it's the Titan A, as confirmed by Terry Metalis on Twitter. It is a Neo-Constitution class ship. Very blocky, evocative of the original Constitution class, while clearly different and updated for the 25th century. The jury's out. I'm going to be very, very honest and say the jury's out. I need to see it in action, because right now we only have a few seconds of it on screen, and the Constitution class, the refit, is my favourite type of ship, so I fully admit I am biased here. But if it is the most beautiful thing you ever saw, I absolutely support you for that one. I just need to see it in action a little bit, I, th I think, to be fair, to be fair. But that's what I think the, mi the misdirect is. We know, because of the internet, we know that there is another very famous, at least, set that's going to be visited in season three. I think, now this is just, this is just me, if you were looking up at a ship that you had never seen before, nor stepped foot on before, would you be like, hello, beautiful? Or would you say that if you were seeing something you really knew very well? That's all I'm going to say about that. Because it could be nothing. That's all I'm going to say about that. The two final things to take away from this trailer are this, the music at the very end is said to be a hint by composer Stephen Barton tweeted this out this evening. That's a hint of the new theme. If you think of the horns that play over the reveal as well of Space Duck, um, I was talking with Chris about this before the video, and you know what? I think I agree with him. It is evocative of that style of Deep Space Nine. Not that it's the theme itself, but it's quite evocative of that slow horns, and I would be delighted to hear that back again. The release date for Star Trek Picard Season 3 is February 16th, 2023. Now, before I go into the next couple of bits of news that came out of today, I must say I was left a little disappointed by the events that took place today. That sounds like, you know, kind of things where I'm at. No, it's not that, but it did seem quite disorganised and it made viewing it live a little bit frustrating. Uh, I thought the hosts, Paul F. Tompkins and T Tony Newsom, did as well as they could. Um, it just felt a little bit like you know, no one really knew what was coming up next and then, oh, is it your go? Oh, I'm not sure, is it your go now? It did feel a little bit like that. Now, I'm not saying I could have done it better. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying it was good for what it was. I think it was far too long. That was, I think, maybe the problem with it. So as a viewer, I felt that the, uh, the, 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 the material we received probably didn't fill out the time in which it was given to us, if that makes sense. And yes, a little bit disorganized. So I think learnings for next year is that it could be a little bit punchier, but before I lose all of my friends, I did very much like what we got. For example, the interviews on stage were quite fun. And of course, the reveals as well. So we're gonna move on now to Star Trek Lower Decks. So we got a scene, Tony Newsom and Noel Wells sat down with Paul F. Tompkins and they discussed what was coming up. Now. The scene in which they showed, showed the refit of the Valdor class Warbird, which we saw in the trailer originally, and we see a Kazinti on the bridge. If this was an ups and downs, you know what would happen. It would be an automatic up. That's how it takes, that's the rules. Captain Freeman is about to order all hands to escape pods when a new ship, the USS Wayfarer, comes flying in. It is a beautifully realized Sovereign class ship, captained by Captain Bucephalus Decker. Is Bucephalus a name? If it is, my love and respect to everyone who has that name, because how many times must you be asked, how do you pronounce that? Tony Newsom said on stage that one of the episodes of this season was going to be a movie sequel. Now, she didn't say if it was a sequel to one of the Star Trek movies, or if it was a movie type sequel. Think of season one's crisis point. Now, it's set on the, on the holodeck, of course, but it's very much a Star Trek movie. This has the feeling of this because, of course, Captain Bucephalus Decker, Decker, like the name, is clearly Boimler. So this, to me, suggests holodeck program. We also know that 
Hendy is going to explore a little bit of her Orion uh, heritage in this season, and that one of the episodes is going to focus on a fringe character, and quote Tony Newsom is a very strange episode that she really, really enjoyed. Next up then was Star Trek Prodigy. Now we see the return of O'Connor, who we saw previously in Star Trek The Next Generation's second season episode of The Outrageous O'Connor. Original actor Billy Campbell returns to play the role. We have a new version of Murph is going to be born. Now we see just how small the protostar is next to the Dauntless, which rises in front of it and it's blatant massive. So it is blatant massive. And you have a not very happy Admiral Janeway chasing after a ship featuring holographic Janeway. And there's quite a funny exchange where holographic Janeway goes, you've got Admiral Janeway on a ship equipped with a slipstream drive chasing you. I don't fancy your chances. To which Dal just goes, thanks for the vote of confidence. And of course, they think that they're sparing the Starfleet crew from getting infected by the living construct that the Diviner has put on board the Protostar. And that's about it. There wasn't really much else, except that we will be getting the next block of episodes on October the 27th. They will be released. So not that long to wait, thankfully, as of course, we are recording this on September the 8th. So not that long to go. Now, a couple of smaller bits of news is that Star Trek Online fans, you will be getting a lovely new new voice in the form of Will Wheaton, who is making his Star Trek Online debut in the expansion game Ascensions. He will be playing his own Mirror Universe con counterpart, where he's not, you know, Ensign or acting Ensign, he's the Terran Emperor. He's done alright for himself, so he has. There was a wonderful tribute to Nichelle Nichols as well, who of course we lost at the end of July. And it was just quite heartwarming to see the impact that she has had, not just Obviously, we commented on our previous video about the impact she's brought to the world, but to the actual people who are involved in making Star Trek as well. It was, it was a wonderfully touching tribute, not least by Sonico Martin-Green. Another piece of news that surprised a few people was when Nicholas Meyer, director of Star Trek's 2 and 6 and co-writer of Star Trek 4, walked out on stage. Now, if you think all the way back to when Discovery was first happening, there was rumor of a Star Trek Khan miniseries about what happened on SETI Alpha 5 between being marooned and between the, ar the arrival of the Reliant. That was written into three hour long episodes and was ready to go and was then through various boring reasons shelved. We are going to get that miniseries. We're just not gonna get it in the format we thought we were it's going to be a podcast. Now, this is the first time, it's not the first podcast, of course, that Star Trek has done, but it's the first time they've taken a big chance like this. And the way that the news was delivered, it seemed like it would start life as a podcast. I think they're putting it out there to test the waters to see if the demand is there. If it is, and if it's good, with Nicholas Meyer writing it, I think it will be, I think the, the dream of it being made into a series in whatever that might look like is not yet dead. No release date yet on that. Then of course, the one we were all waiting for at the end was the Strange New Worlds panel. They talked about, all the cast talked about what their favorite episode from season one was, and it seemed to be almost uniformly the Elysian Kingdom, where everyone got to have a bit of fun and they got to do sword play and fighting and fencing and more sword play. And did I mention the sword play? Melissa Navia spoke about how people kept asking her, when are we getting Ortegas' episode? When are we getting Mortegas? And she said, her answer was, I'm asking the same question. So the clip that was revealed of season two of Strange New Worlds focuses entirely on Ortegas. So she's clearly getting her episode in season two. I'm presuming it's not gonna be the first episode, which I can only assume will feature number one, at least the race to find out what's gonna happen with her. Because speaking of number one, of course, Rebecca Romaine was on stage with the rest of the cast. Now, while she gave no details to her own fate, she did reveal who is playing the new engineer aboard the Enterprise. The role of Pelia, the engineer, will be played by veteran actor Carol Kane. You might know her best from things like Taxi, the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, and of course, from that opening 20 minutes of the seminal horror movie, When a Stranger Calls. You do know her. She's one of, she's one of those actors. I, I'm very excited to see what she brings to the show. She's been described as someone who is a little bit short-tempered, knows what she's doing thanks to years of experience. That is everything that came out of Star Trek Day. 
honestly, it's a bit less than I was expecting. I know a lot of us were hoping for news about Section 31 or any particular shows that might be coming in the future, but alas, nothing on that yet. So if and when that news comes, we will of course bring it to you as early as possible. Everyone, look after yourselves until I see you again. The ups and downs for this week's episode of Star Trek Lower Decks is currently being edited and will most likely drop in a couple of hours. However, this falls in the course of the day. I don't want to put a time frame on it because Chris will break my legs. Everyone, have a lovely weekend. Talk to you soon. Live long and prosper. Our friends in Ukraine, we love you. Stay strong. Everyone, have a great weekend. Make it so.